Amen, amen. Well, it's good to be in the house again. It's good to be with you again. And I want to thank those who are joining us online, our online uh, group that is with us also from Segovia and Lopez and the Hidalgo Boot Camp. Now let's give it up for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're so pleased to have you with us. And those of you who are in the building today, I want to thank you for, I, I know this is your spring break, and some of you probably promised the family you would be at the island in all kinds of places, but we're glad that you're here today to hear this word that I believe that the Lord has for you. As you know, in February, we were talking about uh, building the home, building your house, and making it a strong place. And then uh, we shifted the theme to talking about God's house, building God's house. And Pastor David has been doing an awesome job with uh, spearheading and, and pointing us in that direction. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that this morning, building his house, building his house. And tell your neighbor on your left, say, it's about time. <laughs> tell the neighbor on the other side, it's about time. Time to build his house. Do you remember the miracle? Do you remember the miracle? And now I know you say, what miracle are you talking about? The miracle that got you in the house. The miracle that got you in the building. Because we have individuals that walk by, drive by, and they see this building all the time. And they say to themselves, one day, I'm going to stop in there. One day, I'm going to see what God is doing in that building. And they never make it. It takes a miracle to get you in the building. It takes a miracle to keep you in the building. Amen, somebody? Amen. Isaiah 45 said, God works in mysterious ways. Getting you in this building was one of those mysterious ways. God had to turn heaven and earth in order to get you here. You are the proof of the miraculous. You are the proof that God still does miracles today. Some of the people in your family, they said to you, you went to church? You mean the building didn't collapse when you walked in the door? You mean you did not immediately burst into flames? Because they know your past. They know your life. And so we can come into this building and we can enable one another to think that everything is all so right. But God knows and your family knows. But God has a plan for your life. Some of you, you are the first person in your family to get saved. It's part of his plan. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for this church. God has a plan for this community. And God wants to use you. Are you ready? Are you ready? 1 Corinthians 12, 12 tells us the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. I want you to understand, this body is deformed without you. This body cannot accomplish what it needs to accomplish without you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for enabling us to be here today. We thank you for enabling us to tune in online. Because we know that you have a rich word for us today. And through this spoken word today, may we find our place in the body of Christ. May we understand what it means to be the house of God. Lord, make us proud through your spirit to belong to you. We seek insight through your word. Lord, may we open our ears to hear what you say through your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I took a class about 30 years ago, anatomy and physiology. 30 years ago, 
And the information from that class, I still remember. That was 30 years ago. And my wife is amazed that I can remember and recall information from a class that I took 30 years ago when I cannot recall a grocery list she gave me 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Go figure. But the human mind is so remarkable. The human body is so remarkable. You could be lying in bed, and all of a sudden your body tells you, you need to go to the restroom. <laughs> you will wake up out of a sleep, out of a slumber, stagger to the restroom, do your business, stagger back to bed, and fall back to sleep. The human body is amazing what God has put together. Man cannot comprehend. And that's why they call it all kinds of other things. But we know it is a body that God has made. This body God has made. I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, and I look at this body, and I say, oh my goodness, it's growing in all kinds of ways, and all kinds of things are going on. But if I don't stop myself, I can go down a lane to become depressed, to say, oh, look what mess God has made. But God has made no mess in this human body, amen? God does not make a mess. God does not make disaster. God has made you, and you are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. You are awesome. But we don't always understand what God has made in this body. You need to know and walk in it. The body, amazing. I don't expect that if I'm walking this way forward and wanting to go forward, I don't expect my body to all of a sudden start going backwards. I don't expect it. Amen. If you're keeping notes, don't write that down. <laughs> Don't write that down. But the human body is amazing. It does what we purpose it to do in the mind. God made it. And it's not by accident that he made the body the way it is. If you're writing down a title of this message this morning, my body, my house, my people. My body, my house, my people. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 12 says, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. Now you can have an individual that has split personalities, and we have to resolve those issues. But God does not expect the body of Christ to have split issues. I can't split my body, and the same with the body of Christ, we cannot split it up. And so it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we share the same spirit. We are the body of Christ, the church is the body of Christ. Now, there are some individuals who get comfortable with coming into this building and thinking this is the church. The building is not the church. Because if you stop by here any day of the week and this building is empty, it is not a church. It's just an empty building. Now, you may walk in, and we hear individuals that come here to do work and different things. They say, oh, wow, we can feel something in here. We feel the Spirit of God in here. And I say to them, the Spirit of God is not here right now. What you feel, what you sense is the residue as a result of God's people being here. Because we are the body of Christ. We are the church, not this building. Now, you can become comfortable in coming once a week or once a month 
to this building and tell everyone that you went to church. Or you can become comfortable through the Spirit of God to say, I am the church, and I got together with those others who were a part of the body of Christ. And when two or three are gathered in his name and he is there in the midst of them, then we have church because we are the church. That's what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. Not just coming to a building, but being a part of the body of Christ, as his word points out to us. And walking and being a part of what? That same spirit. You might have an individual that sits on this side of the church that you're upset with, and you sit on that side. But as the two of you begin to walk in the Spirit, hallelujah, as the two of you begin to walk in the Spirit, all of a sudden something begins to happen in your heart. Something begins to stir your spirit to say, I cannot be angry or upset with that individual because as walking in the Spirit, there's a conviction down in my soul that tells me I need to get it right. Because I'm a part of the body of Christ, they're a part of the body of Christ. What I want you to walk away from today is understanding what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. We are the church. We are the church. And we need to understand the significance of the body of Christ if we're going to be a part of it. Many years ago, I took a visit to Boston, Massachusetts. And some friends of mine took me to a church. I walked into church. I listened to the music. I listened to the preaching. But all of a sudden, something began to happen in my spirit, man. Something began to stir in me. And I said, you know what? When I get back to Detroit, I need to find a church like this. Something made me hungry. And it was the presence of God. It was the presence of God that I said, I need, I desire, I want what I'm feeling. It was God that drew me to that church. And so when I got back to Detroit, I went through the yellow pages looking at churches And all of a sudden, I came upon Brightmoor Christian Church. I had no idea what it was all about or anything. But you know what? When I walked into that church, all of a sudden, I felt that same spirit. That same spirit. It wasn't about the people saying hello or anything. It was the spirit. That's what drew me. But it was the body of Christ that helped to keep me. The spirit drew me, but the body of Christ helped to keep me. Because had that body rejected me, I would have gone somewhere else. But the spirit drew me to that exact church. Well, how do you know that? Because of the results, because of the evidence. As a result of going to that church, I got saved, filled with the Spirit, got my call to ministry. Had I never walked in there, who knows how that would have turned out. But it was the body of Christ that was there that helped me. Some people go looking for a good church. A good church is almost like what they... Say is a good job. What is a good job? A good job is a job that pays me a lot of money and I don't have to do anything to get it. (laughs) And with some people, a good church is like that. I get all the blessing, but I don't have to do anything to get it. Say amen or ouch. (laughs) It's almost like what Pastor David was telling us about that 80-20 rule. 80% of the people come and get all the blessing, and 20% of the people foot the bill. Now, that's about tithe and offering. If you're visiting here, it has nothing to do with you. As we come to feast here, as a part of the body of Christ, be the body of Christ. Be the body of Christ. I heard someone say a church is like going to the car wash. You know, you put your money in the little box and then you drive out the other way clean. 
It's not that easy. It's not that easy. You can't just come in and leave changed. You got to become a part of the body of Christ. You have to allow the spirit of God in so that he can change from the inside out. God's design is flawless. God designed the body of Christ. And when we look at God's design and the flawlessness that is there is set by his word and by his spirit. The body of Christ has a design. The body of Christ has a purpose. The body of Christ has a destination. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 18, it says, But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. The design is perfect. You're a part of the design. You may think you came here by accident, but today is your divine appointment with God. Today, God set apart for you to be right here to understand who you are as the body of Christ. We don't always understand it. Each one of you have a gift that God has placed within you that fit perfectly with everyone else that is here. Like I said earlier, we can become comfortable with just coming in the doors and leaving, or we can become uncomfortable saying, God, where's my place? How do I fit in? And he will help you to know that. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 16. It says, he makes the whole body fit together. What? Perfectly. No matter how awkward you might think you are, you what? You fit here perfectly. Perfectly. Because of the gift that he has placed within you, but it's up to you to find your place and how it fit. So many times people expect Pastor David to walk up to you and say, oh, what is your gift? Okay, I'm going to plug you in right here. And what is your gift? Okay, I'm going to plug you in right here. When I went into that church, I went there being drawn by the Holy Spirit, but there was something within me that recognized that God had placed me there. Therefore, I had to find out through the Spirit of God, through the Word of God, what was my purpose there. And it was the body of Christ that helped me to understand what it meant to be a part of the body of Christ that was there. I didn't go there looking for a church. I went there looking for God, but I found a church. I found the body of Christ. I found how I fit in perfectly with the people that were there because they were walking in the Spirit, and they taught me through the Word of God how to walk in the Spirit also. Amen. They brought me to a place of maturity, of understanding how to rightly divide the Word of God. They brought me to a level of understanding what it meant to experience real love that flows down from God's heaven into my heart and into my life that changed my life, changed my family, changed how I walk, changed how I talk, made me a new person. I went searching. I went searching for the Spirit. And I became satisfied because of the Spirit of God. You have to come into this building examples of all kinds of people that are here. Red, black, green, yellow, pink. You can say whatever color you want to say. <laughs> but it's the Spirit of God that makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. As I said, God called me to the ministry through that church. But it was through mentors and through individuals that began to what? Deposit into my life that made a difference. But had I become comfortable in just visiting, walking in the door, walking out of the door, I would have remained the same, probably never discovering the call that God had placed upon my life. When I talked to individuals there, they pulled me in. They pulled my family in. They made a difference. They were the body of Christ. The body of Christ, we're here to encourage one another, to teach one another, to direct one another, to shepherd one another. That doesn't just happen with a pastoral staff. It happens in the body of Christ that we make a difference in one another's life. The body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 11 says, Now these are the gifts 
Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip. Equip who? God's people, the church, the body of Christ. To do what? To do the work. To heal, to save, to baptize. You're to do that work among the body of Christ. And it says to what? And build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until what? Until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord. Mature in the Lord. You can go to church for 20 years and still not mature in the Lord. I see people all the time who have not matured in the Lord because they still hop from this church, hop to that church, and then they get offended here and they go on to another church because they're trying to find something that makes them feel good. I want something that will reach my spirit, something that will change me, something that will take care of this flesh, something will help me to understand what it means to rightly divide God's word. Only the body of Christ can make that happen. But if I just want to feel good, I can find a church that will make me feel good. I can go in and they can have the best music. They can have the best of everything. But if the Spirit of God is not there and if the body of Christ is not there, it's just an empty building that has people in it. That's not what I was looking for. That's not what I was drawn to. I was drawn to look for the Spirit. And the body of Christ met me and made me a part of the body of Christ. I was engrafted by the Spirit of God into that group. Some of you will say, I just came here chasing a blessing today. I heard the music was good here. I heard the worship was good here. That will entertain you, but it won't keep you. Just the same as we've seen others. You can see them on the street. Like I said, it took a miracle to get you in the building. It takes a miracle to keep you in the building. It took a miracle to engraft you into the body of Christ. It takes a miracle to keep you engrafted into the body of Christ. God has called you to this place. It's not by accident that you turned up here. But as what he has and desire for you, you have to determine through his word, the body of Christ. Remember the story at Cornelius' house, Acts chapter 10, verse 37. You know, he's talking to them, Peter's talking to them. And when Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, remember, Peter was praying. And all of a sudden, the Lord gave him a vision. And said, go to this house. And all of a sudden, he turns up. God sends men. And he goes to Cornelius' house. And this is what happened. He said, you know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee. After John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. This ministry that Jesus and the disciples were doing, that ministry has been turned on to or turned over to the body of Christ. That's what we are supposed to be doing in one another's life. The ministry that is passed on to us, that anointing that Jesus had, that spirit that Jesus had has been turned on to us. And we are to go around doing these same things, healing the oppressed. And it continues in verse number 44. It says, even as Peter was saying these things, what happened? The Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. Wouldn't you love for that to happen? You walk into your cousin's house. And they ask you a question about the Spirit of God, about the power of God, about the Word of God. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to fall right there in that very room as you begin to talk about the Son of God. Can you imagine the lives that will be changed as you begin to speak His Word, as you begin to be His church? 
That's what the body of Christ is all about. That's what we're supposed to be doing, changing lives when we come into the contact of those individuals who do not know him. That's what happened to me when I walked into that church. All of a sudden, I came in contact with the body of Christ. I came in contact with the Spirit of God, and it changed me. That's what God wants for you and your families, that when they come in contact with you, they sense that something is going on down within you, and they hunger, and they thirst for that. That's the Spirit of God making you a part of the body of Christ. God's design is flawless. Christ has a destination for his body, for his house, for his people. God's design is priceless. Priceless. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14, it says, Christ paid the price so that the blessing promised to Abraham would come to all the people of the world through Jesus Christ. And we would what? We would receive the promised spirit through faith. As I put my faith in Jesus Christ, that spirit was placed within me. That's what being born again is all about. That I receive the spirit of God in me. And as a result of that spirit being in me, when I come into the presence of others who do not know God, all of a sudden they take a step back. They say, there's something different about you. I run into friends I run into schoolmates when I go back to Detroit, not here. And all of a sudden, they say, what happened to you? And I say to them, what happened to you? (laughs) Because there's something about the Spirit of God that makes a change in you, but preserves you, that does something within you, that stirs within you, that others notice the difference in you. It is the power of God. It is the Spirit of God. And we need, as the body of Christ, to recognize who we are as a result of the Spirit being in us. Sometimes we don't understand it. We think coming to church is coming into this building. Going to church is being the church wherever you go. Because of the Spirit of God who is in you. And touching lives around you. People hunger for God not because of this building. They hunger for God because of you. You. They see the Spirit of God alive in you because you are a part of the body of Christ. And as they see that Spirit alive in you, they say, you know what? I recognize that from the Bible. Wherever the disciples went, the power of God went with them. Wherever you go, the power of God is going with you. But if the devil distracts you, if the devil distracts you, you don't even know that that Spirit is in you. It is amazing to me, those who get depressed, those who want to take their life, Because the devil has duped them into thinking that they're nothing. You are priceless as a result of the Spirit of God who is in you. And so many times we get distracted by the story that the devil tells us that we're nothing. That's just a distraction because he knows who you are. He recognized better than you who you are. Well, Pastor, I'm just not convinced that... The word of God is true. He's got you fooled. Because I know that I know that I know that I'm filled with the spirit and God's word comes from here and it changes lives. I know it. He will distract you every chance he get if you don't know who you are. God built you for community. God built you to be a part of the body of Christ. That's why the pandemic was such an issue. Because we were told to be in isolation. We were not made for isolation. We were made for community. We were made for for togetherness. We were made to be a part of a body. You can't separate this. But the enemy will try and separate this. Don't be separated. Don't be duped. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. It says, you are citizens along with all of God's holy people. 
You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Did you know God's spirit is in you? You house the spirit of God. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord through him. You Gentiles are also being made is a process that we're going through that God is doing in our life. God has sanctified us, set us apart. But guess what? God is continuing to set us apart from this world. God is continuing to do a work in our lives. The Spirit has not stopped working on you. The Spirit has not stopped working on me. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. Yep, God's still working on him. (laughs) But we're being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his Spirit. God purchased you to be a dwelling place for his Spirit. God purchased you to be a dwelling place for his spirit. That he would put his spirit in you. That you would become alive. You were dead before you met Christ. I was dead before I walked into that church. And all of a sudden I sensed that I needed to become alive to Christ. I sensed that there was something missing in my life. God led me to that body of Christ. God led me to that house that I can become a house that he would dwell in, that he would put his spirit in. Acts chapter 7 and verse 46. It says, David found favor with God and asked for the privilege of building a permanent temple for God, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon actually built it. But it says, however, and I love What the word says here, God has such a way with words. It's remarkable. He says, however, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Ask the Lord, could you build me such a resting place? Can we build something like heaven? Absolutely not. We cannot build something like heaven that God can dwell in. But God himself, by his spirit, made something that he can dwell in. That is you and I. That his spirit can be in. That he can walk with you, talk with you, make you who he wants to be. You are a dwelling place for God, but we must understand it. We must know beyond a shadow of a doubt who we are in Christ. We are the house of God and his spirit is in us. And we have to know that. Like we were saying earlier, we don't have to have any fear as long as we understand that the spirit of God is in us. We bring fear fear upon the enemy. We bring fear upon the devil and all of his imps as a result of the spirit of God being in us. Knowing who we are, we make the devil turn tail and run. But if we don't know it, we will back up every moment. Do you ever, ever see a picture in God's word where where Jesus took a step back from the enemy? Absolutely not. He took steps forward. He put the devil in his place using the word of God, being full of the spirit of God. That's what you and I are supposed to do every day of the week. And it's not just once a week when we come into this building, but it's every day of the week as we rise up out of our bed, as our feet hit the cold ground, all of a sudden we know that we're walking and talking the word of God. We're filled with the spirit of God and we're changing the lives of people that are around us. Why? Because we are his house. He dwells within us. And when we get together and iron sharpens iron, we sharpen one another. We encourage one another. We, the body of Christ, the house of God, the people of God, we do that for one another. But if I want to become satisfied in walking into this, these walls week after week and leaving, I, God will allow me to be satisfied with that. But I will be empty everywhere I go. And I will not change a life anywhere I go. If I'm just satisfied with attending church. We're not about attending church. We're about being the church. That's what he has called us to be. 
And when we look all over the globe, we see a universal church, people changing lives because of the spirit of God that is in them. God brought you here for such a time as this. You can look all over Facebook. You can look all over the news and you will find a world that needs to know that there's a Jesus Christ who loves them and has a church for them. You. You. <clears throat> Can we build a building as great as heaven? No, we cannot. But God with his own hands build a place that he can dwell. God's design leads to eternal life. God's design for his body, for his house, for his people leads to eternal life. I close with this. John chapter 14 and verse number one. It says, don't be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not true, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And he told us. And it says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Then I will bring you into my presence so that you will be where I am. The destination is heaven. How long? Forever. But as long as we're here, God has an expectation on each and every one of us to be his body, to be his house, to be his people. But we can't do that if we don't mature in the faith. It's about maturity. We become a part of what God is wanting to do as we listen and hear his voice and walk in his word. The body of Christ, the church, is a living organism. Satan doesn't like that. So he tries to kill each part that he can. But we won't be fooled. We know who we are. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you're helping us to understand through your word who we are, what it means to be a part of this body. Lord, we realize we have purpose, but each time the enemy has tried to distract us from it. Lord, we would stray away, we would go away, but we find ourselves coming back each time because of the drawing of your spirit. Lord, we understand the gift that you have placed within each one of us is for a purpose. And that purpose is to perfectly fit together with the rest of the body. Lord, may we repent for not having it right, for giving ourselves to things that would distract us from the purpose that you have for us. Lord, stir us this morning. Stir us to hunger for the design that you have for the body of Christ. If you're here this morning, and you might say, well, Pastor Carl, I don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I've never accepted him in my heart. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed. And you would say to yourself this morning, I need to be a part of the body of Christ. I sense it in my spirit. I sense that what I have been doing with my own life has been reckless. I've been missing the mark. But this morning, I understand the true purpose of the body of Christ, a house that God can dwell in. 
He's calling me this morning to be a people that is set apart with a purpose. I didn't know that before, but I recognize it today. And if that's you, with all eyes closed, no one looking around, if you just raise your hand and say, pray for me, pastor. Pray for me. I don't know Jesus. Raise it a little bit higher so I can see. Amen, amen. Anyone else? Just keep it there for a moment. Anyone else over here? Okay, amen. Others? Just keep it there for a moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that are raised at home and across this auditorium. Lord, they are signifying their need for you to be a part of their lives, to lead them by your spirit. And Lord, we ask this morning that you accept them into your family. As we pray, Lord, we know the reality of these words will happen. I'm going to ask the congregation to pray with those that have raised their hand. But those of you who raised your hands, as you say these words, believe them in your heart and your spirit will be changed. You will be alive to Christ because his word does not lie. His word is the truth. And the word says, if I confess Jesus Christ as Lord, that he will come and reside in me. He will forgive me of my sins. That's what you're doing today. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. I repent for my past life. And I thank you for your forgiveness. And I know from this day forward, I will never be the same. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I confess that with my mouth. And I receive him as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that is here today. Lord, may they go from this place understanding what the body of Christ is all about, what the house of God is all about, what the people of God have been called to do. Lord, thank you for the blessing of your word. Now anoint their ears and their hearts to continue to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God keep you.